Hey there, this is element two, the technician study exam. This is sub element eight, Charlie. Let's go ahead and start with question number one. Which of the following methods is used to locate sources of noise interference or jamming? And that is radio direction finding. And I just did a video similar to this called Fox Hunting, ARDF, the search for the rogue transmitter. This video is live on YouTube. And we were looking for this truck, which was transmitting periodically, and we hunted him down across the city, and we did find him. And you can see that we're using a beam with a, an attenuator and a VHF radio, just like this one here that I'm holding in my hand. It's the same radio. So we were able to locate them. It took us about 45 minutes. Uh, next year will be better. So that is radio direction finding. ARDF is amateur radio direction finding. Which of these items would be useful for a hidden transmitter hunt? And that is a directional antenna. The beauty of this directional antenna is that it has a lobe on the front and it rejects from the side. Now, the back receives a little bit, uh, but that's okay because it, it, get, it gets more from the front of the antenna. And then with the attenuator, we can really turn that thing down. So that is a directional antenna. What operating activity involves contacting as many stations as possible during a specific period? That is contesting. And there are some people that really enjoy contesting. And there are so many types of contests out there. There's digital, there's voice, there's CW, and then there's location ones. There's QSO parties, state QSO parties. There's all kinds of stuff out there. Which of the following is good procedure when contacting another station in a contest? So first you need to understand what the contest is and what the exchange is. You send only the minimum information needed for proper identification, that's your call sign, and the contest exchange. So you need to listen. If it's the state and a grid locator, then you give them state and a grid locator. If it's a signal report and a serial number, better start having that serial number and keep it track if you're going to participate. Only the minimum information needed for that proper identification and the contest exchange. What is a grid locator? It is a letter number designator assigned to a geographic location. I've got a map right here of the United States. And you can see, if you look down here around Georgia, I'm in Echo Mike 81. So if I'm in a VHF contest, that is what I'm going to give is Echo Mike 81. And folks do collect these squares and there are people that have made contact with every square on this map at some point in time. It's pretty nifty stuff. That uh, is yet another thing that you can get into with amateur radio. So I guess we're back to fox hunting again. <laughs> and uh, I forgot that I was already on the web. So we'll go back to the ham test now. How is over the air access to IRLP nodes accomplished? And that over the air access is by using DTMF signals. And IRLP is the Internet Radio Linking Project. If you want to know more, that's at IRLP.net. Question seven What is voice over Internet Protocol or VOIP? And that is a method of delivering voice communications over the Internet using digital techniques. Well, I have another website, and maybe I won't get lost this time. Ham Shack Hotline is VOIP that's free for hams. All you have to do is go find you a radio, uh, a radio, a telephone that is compatible with their system. I actually have one similar to this right here. Mine is black and white, but uh, you can you can do this if you have a, a license as a technician. You can have a VOIP phone and you can talk to other hams that are on the VOIP network. What is the Internet Radio Linking Project? Didn't we just hear this question? It's a technique to connect amateur radio systems such as repeaters via the Internet using 
VOIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. And again, if you want IRLP, that is IRLP.net. Now we're moving on to question number nine. Which of the following protocols enables an amateur station to transmit through a repeater without using a radio to initiate the transmission? And the correct answer is D, Echo Link. Now, if I can focus, Echo Link is an application you can get on your phone. It, uh, it's supported uh, through both, both styles, Android and iPhone. And you can also use it on the computer. I host one myself. And so I can connect to the one at my house. And if I wanted to, I could transmit to my local repeater over Echo Link. So when I'm on vacation, I like to keep this up in case I want to check into a net on Tuesday nights. But there are stations all over the world on Echo Link. What is required before using the Echo Link system? Well, you have to register your call sign and provide proof of license. It's very easy. You'll go to the Echo Link website and then you'll register for your call sign and provide proof of license. And that would be a, a paper copy of your license. What is an amateur radio station that connects other amateur stations on, to the internet? And that is called a gateway. A gateway is how it connects to the internet. I have an APRS or automatic position reporting system gateway at home. So when I receive those packets, it puts them on the internet through that gateway and that way they can be accessed on the internet. And we have just received the end of element two sub element eight Charlie was all about some cool internet stuff. So thanks so much for watching. We will catch you again. We're almost at the end and you should be about ready to take this exam.